Yeah, it's all the big issues of our time on this uh, election day broadcast where we can't really talk about British politics, but we have for the duration the former diplomatic editor of Sky News. He now runs a website called The What and the Why as opposed to The Where and the When and The Who. <laughs> Not The Who, that's a wrong word. Welcome back Thank to the programme. Tim Marshall, what's your take on this? I have some sympathy with your last point. I, I, uh, they won't be watching the daily politics. Perhaps they should be, but they won't be. And it goes back down the line. Oh, Britain has made a decision. It gets mixed up down the line. Ah, oh, they're going to take 3,000 kids. Now's my chance to, take my 40, to push my 14-year-old there. Now, that's not uh, in defence of, of that happening. And also, when Jo made the introduction, she mentioned the date March the 20th mm. because that was the EU-Turkey deal. Right. So the Prime Minister is trying to block the pull factor Despising anybody who comes yes. in after that uh, is... Yeah, yeah. We will deal with the people in uh, the European Union countries, the children, now. But that message also yeah. needs to go back down the line. Anybody from now on will not be taken to the UK. But I'm not sure that the clarity of that message will reach all the way to a Syrian uh, camp. I, just... I mean, Tim Marshall, is this EU-Turkey deal sustainable? I mean, it seems to be working in the broadest sense that there are refugees going back in to Turkey if they failed with their asylum. Um, and I'm presumably <coughs> the Syrian refugees uh, legitimately are coming into the EU. But is it going to work in the long term? Well, it's a stopgap, isn't it? I mean, they, they flailed around desperately to find something to work, and it has partially worked. I think, you know, we can overstate it has not stopped. It has simply reduced. Also, it's important to remember, this, the deal hasn't... The, sorry, that deal is agreed, but this visa deal is mm. not yet agreed. No. no. And, and there's an awful lot of stumbling blocks in the way they because have 72... Because the European Parliament's got yeah, to agree. They have the 72 things they need to uh, oh. do, the Turks. They haven't done them all, including giving work visas to Syrians in Turkey. And so... I think what they've done is kicked it into the medium-length uh, grass. They weren't going to make a decision before the EU referendum. We will know for, for sure after that. Do you think it might not happen then, this visa well, I, th well, I think it's possible it won't happen because there are still several stumbling blocks right. for it to happen. And, and very briefly, there's only 7 million Turkish passport holders. One of the 72, right. one of the 72 <coughs> um, criteria is that they must have biometric oh, passports. Yes. Consequently, you're not going to see a, an immediate flood if the deal goes through, but you will see increased numbers. I mean, Paul Nuttall... So if no, but what I mean is he's not talking to the outside <laughs> world. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I used to go to the White House and they used to get ignored. I'm used to it because these to say there's no votes in Britain. You know, they don't care about us. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I understand that, but yeah, every candidate has a policy. It's clear that Hillary Clinton is a... In fact, she will probably be even more pro-NATO than Mr Obama. We, we have spent, quite rightly, understandably, five minutes talking about the things we always talk about. He's talking about something else. These are new times. They are different times. And the problem with the European audience, uh, it, it watches this orange buffoon and the things that come out of his mouth, and they hear it with a European elite ear. You've got to put yourself in the steelworkers' ears mm, in exactly. Pittsburgh and realise that he's talking about protectionism for steel, mm. putting tariffs on. Now, people in Pittsburgh who are worried about the jobs in steel are not hearing an orange buffoon. They're hearing, yeah. Now, I'm not talking about the rights and the wrongs and the, 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 mm. the, the detail. The, the single most important thing Ronald Reagan ever did to get elected was have an advert that ended with, it's sunrise in America. He cuts straight through. <laughs> this guy punches straight we, through. Actually, the phrase was, it's glad morning again. Glad morning. Yes, because it was America. We've already had we have been, we have, um, So we've run I'm out of time. I'm impressed by the memory, though, for the we end of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> We need to get out more you often. Do. This is all there. You're I'm Kennedy. just disappointed there will not be a contested convention in Cleveland. I'm sure we'll have. Not a second, was that? I mean, Tim, Tim Marshall. I mean, it, it is difficult for people like Musna. The, the, the problem is Assad, and in her mm -hmm. mind, Assad to some extent created IS. I mean, you, you know, the, the, it sort of came as a result of uh, the brutality. And in the meantime, civilians just continue to be killed. You know, the Russians may say, "Don't worry, we're, we're dealing with IS," and in the meantime, they're killing the the, the moderate Syrian opposition. Um, civilians continue continue to be killed. There's a ceasefire in Aleppo, less violence, but people are still being yeah. killed. I, I gave evidence to the uh, Defence Select Committee yesterday on, on this subject, and uh, I was arguing that you have to talk to the Russians uh, because they have made themselves a player in it, mm. and it, it's pointless not engaging with them. Uh, the rights and wrongs of it have to be put to one side, but the second thing uh, I was arguing for was the, on the humanitarian front. We do have the C-130 Hercules in Cyprus that now can drop aid into, as it was said in the, in the Defence Select Committee yesterday, a room this size from 
quite high up. So it's, targeted. But it's moved on. Anthony Lloyd of the Times was, was next to me in the committee and he said something I hadn't actually thought of. He said, yes, you have to negotiate with the Russians to get that aid in so they don't shoot the British planes but, down and the Syrians. Mm. But he said even people on the ground might shoot at it because they're so angry with us for abandoning them. But they are the only ones in the air, really, aren't they? The Russians and, and Assad. I mean, are the Russians minded to put pressure on Assad soon? to go, to step back? I mean, how much longer? When are it they... suits them, they've already safeguarded their interests, the port and the airport. They've already safeguarded the regime and made sure it can't lose. It can't win, but it can't lose. And at some point, mm. they will settle. I mean, we've been here before. Mm. At some point, they will settle. But it's going to be very complicated. The, sorry, the last thing that really has to be put on the agenda, as well as the C-130s, is the arming of the Kurds. Um, we uh, have given them machine guns. We can't get the ammunition to them because it goes through Baghdad. Oh. We are not really supporting the Kurds, and they are, the, they are the boots on the ground that everyone talks about. Musna and Chris Minblunt, thank you both very much. And it's just been confirmed that the Turkish Prime Minister is stepping down at his party's conference on May the 22nd. That will have ramifications, indeed even reverberations, for the European Union. Now to the vote that's dominating thoughts in Europe. No, not our referendum. But Eurovision, of course, is now just nine days away. I know you're just ticking off the days till it happens. Wow. It's already beset, or Joko is, it's already beset by controversy after organisers decided to ban the Welsh flag alongside those of ISIS, the Crimea <laughs> and the Basque country. Sounds bad enough, especially when you consider that one half of the duo singing for Britain this year is Welsh. So before we discuss this, let's take you back to happier times when Bonnie Tyler was belting out Believe in Me in 2013. See if you can spot the Welsh flag in the audience. Well, we asked for a representative from Eurovision to come on, but they declined. I don't know why. They told us they aim to keep Eurovision free from political statements and so only allowed official national flags from members of the United Nations and rainbow flags as an accepted symbol of diversity. Well, to discuss this, we're now joined by David Jones, Conservative MP for Cluid West, constituency MP of our contestant this year, Joe Wolford, and from our Reading studio by Nikki French, who was our Eurovision contestant in 2000. Welcome to both of you. So how does it feel to have the Welsh flag on the band list along with IS, Crimea and Basque Country? Well, well it's, it's a pretty much of a downer, I have to say. Well, uh, <laughs> y yes, I, I thought you might say that. <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, we, 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 we very rarely achieve the big time in mm. Wales, and here we are, uh, representing Representing the United Kingdom in the Eurovision Song Contest and the lumping us in with ISIS, with Northern Cyprus uh, and with Palestine and other politically sensitive areas. What's quite interesting though is that they are allowing the EU flag. Now, given what's going on in this country at the moment, <laughs> I can't think, that was think of anything more political than to display the EU flag. Well, your tone is taken that this is a personal slight to the people of Wales, isn't it? It's, as we say in Wales, it's a snub to Wales. It's a slap in the face. And, I mean, and we're, I'm pretty cross about it. Right, well, Nikki French, I mean, how important is it to see your flags, your country's flags, waving at you while you're performing? Oh, I still remember um, the day of the contest. I'd, I'd gone up to my hotel room because it's actually being held in the same place as I did mine oh, in 2000. Yeah, first time ever. Oh, first time, first time since. And um, I remember looking out of my hotel room, and the, the, the Globe Arena is in the same venue as your hotel. It's all one great big complex. Um, and seeing people start to arrive for the contest, waving their flags and suddenly seeing the Union Jack was just very, very, very special. Right, well, we've made David feel worse now about this. So <laughs> you, you and your countrymen and women won't have um, that facility. What will you do instead, do you think? Well, I have to say that this will be the first occasion I will ever watch the Union <laughs> Song Contest. Yeah, and I will be sitting at home waving my red dragon, as will people ride across Wales. Right. I mean, do you think, Nikki, it will be distracting for um, Joe and Jake? Uh, who are performing? 
Not at all. I mean, the thing is, there are loads and loads and loads of flags in that audience nowadays. Um, it, there's been problems with flags for many years. In 2000, the Israelis wanted to wave a Syrian flag um, at the end of their performance, and that all came to blows. Um, the, Israeli, <laughs> the Israeli delegation almost um, boycotted them because they didn't want that happening. But right. in the end, they sort of compromised. Um, I don't think the Welsh flag is now banned. Um, it doesn't fit the criteria, from mm. what I understand, um, but it's not officially banned. Right, but the, and... result, but the result, I think, is, is the same, um, even if the, the semantics are slightly different. I'm just going to Tim Marshall, because your next book, rather conveniently, is about flags. It's a politically sensitive yeah. issue, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's, uh, my book, next book's called Worth Dying For, because some people think it is worth dying for. Hopefully not um, in the Eurovision Song Contest. No, content. well, that's three brief things. One, I did notice that Andrew's introduction said, about the Welsh flag and the ISIS flag and made no mention of the Scottish saltire nah, that's in the true. same breath. Yes. Well, it's not in the Eurovision Zone Gundam. Neither is... Ah, oh, but that's my well, second point. Yes, Neither is Wales. Wales. Yes. No, Wales is not. The United Kingdom. The, it's the, just the, that the, the Welsh point is that the Red Dragon is our national flag and it should be there. But she's not singing for the Wales. She's it is one of the United Kingdom's national flags and it should be represented. Moving, <laughs> moving uh, briefly on, moving briefly on um, I th also think it, it's pretty certain now that, that it's out, this story is out, that somebody will try and smuggle in an offensive ah. flag. An offensive uh, yes. well, no, 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 I've got the rules. This Confus is getting worse. Confiscated yeah. flags and banners will not be returned, so don't try and turn it with one. You won't get it back. No, he's doing it in his living and room. And anyone yeah. bringing in an offensive flag I'm not that's not my no. criteria may be uh. removed from oh, the venue. so there could be more controversy at oh, yes. uh, the Eurovision Song Contest what are you going to do to remedy this early day motion well I've already tabled a question to John Whittingdale so I'm looking forward to replying this he's too busy scheduling BBC programs except for he, he should take an interest in this uh, it, 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 there's a serious point this is one of our national flags and I think it is quite disgraceful that the uh, European Broadcasting Union is not recognizing it well I think at this right. point we'll have to say goodbye. Good luck, obviously, because it is the UK, obviously, nomination going into the Eurovision Indeed. Song Contest. Oh, yeah. I'll be watching. Will you be watching, Andrew? Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> Nikki anyway, French. Nikki French, it. thank you very much, too. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. Thanks to all of our guests. The One O'Clock News is starting over on BBC One now. There's no daily politics tomorrow, oh, no. but you can catch up on the results of today's elections on the Results Programme with Hugh Edwards tonight from 11.45 in the evening on BBC One and throughout the day tomorrow on BBC Two. You're going I'm to be going doing to be that. On. I'll and be on from 12 till 6. We'll be there. I'll have my feet up yes, watching it. And I'll be back <laughs> yeah, on Sunday true. with the Sunday politics at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's on BBC One. We hope then to be able to give you a more considered, rounded picture with all the results being in. I hope you can join us on all this BBC election coverage. Bye-bye.